I finally decided that it's time to start therapy. Now what? Where do I start? How do I know who's going to be a good fit? Do, does, does this person take my insurance? All these questions are completely valid and legitimate, and I'm here to walk you through the process from my perspective. I'm Laura Nicola. I'm your faithful therapist. what next steps are. So there's a couple kind of categories that I kind of break, you know, finding a therapist into. The first is literally where do I start? So how do I, you know, get a recommendation or a referral? Well, I usually say start with the people closest to you. You know, ask family and friends if they have anybody that they know of. You know, if you're aware that somebody is in counseling, say, hey, would you recommend your therapist or their practice? Or, you know, do you know if they're taking new patients? That can just kind of start a conversation, right? Um, I think also starting with your local church is a great place to start. I know our practice gets a lot of referrals from clergy, so from priests and deacons, you know, that have been way made, you know, aware of us and kind of the work we do. And so asking, you know, the church, you know, whether that's the office, you know, secretary or receptionist, or asking your priest or deacon that you know for a recommendation, hopefully they have one, um, you know, it's worth a try starting there. You can also find people on catholictherapist.com. That's usually where I kind of suggest that people go. Um, not every state, you know, has people listed, but it's at least worth an option. You can also just kind of Google, honestly, you know, kind of in my state, you know, somebody, you know, in my area that could be good. I mean, I get a lot of, you know, direct messages on Instagram asking me to provide therapy and it's worked out a few times, a handful of times, um, because they've been in my state. The one caveat of, you know, finding somebody that's maybe has a social media presence is that the person has, the therapist has to be licensed in the state in which you reside due to licensing laws. So you might find, you know, an outreach, a person on social media and they may or may not be able to help you, but I mean, hopefully the people that have reached out to me that are outside of Colorado have still found it helpful though to kind of make that point of contact and then I can refer them to somebody else, you know, kind of in my little network of other people that I know across the states um, or just again, kind of providing them this information. So you can, you know, you utilize social media, utilize, you know, Google. I see things on our local neighborhood um, chat, I guess you could say, um, through like email and Facebook, you know, like, hey, looking for, you know, a faith-based counselor for my adolescent, you know. So it's it's useful, you know, to get other people's recommendations because it's kind of nice, like even as like a starting point, you know, say like, oh, this person recommends you, you know, and I trust this person, so it's helpful trusting you. You know, it's just kind of a nice like way in, right? So lots of places to start. Now, when you're thinking about, you know, maybe you have a few options, I think it's important to think about your priorities for counseling. So this can look different from person to person and there's no right or wrong, just something to think about. You know, is my priority location? You know, I want to be in person or I want telehealth or I need it to be close to home or, you know, I don't mind driving if it's the right fit. I don't know, that could be a question, right? Um, is my priority the time that they can take? You know, I have a lot of people ask about Saturdays, for example. Are you open Saturdays? You know, if that's a priority, that's going to be one way to rule out, you know, probably a handful of therapists or not. Um, you know, or I need after work or I need early morning or I need Fridays. You know, not every therapist is going to be able to accommodate that. So is that a priority? Well, you can start maybe with that, right? Is priority the cost? You know, do I want to specifically go through my insurance so I only pay a copay? You know, okay, that might be a priority to you. You know, or can I go to a clinic that accepts a sliding scale? You know, okay, at least that kind of provides, you know, maybe slightly more options because they work on that, you know, which would just mean, you know, kind of a variable pay schedule according to income probably. Um, is my priority gender? You know, I... 
I would prefer a female being a female or the opposite. You know, I would prefer a male because I'm a male or I would prefer a male's perspective because I'm a female. I don't know. You know, gender might play into it. It might not. Age might. Um, I'm kind of biased towards this because I usually get told that I look pretty young. And so you know, I'm like, well, don't rule me out just because I look young. You know, it's kind of maybe a, a question of expertise or, you know, amount of years, you know, experience. Um, but honestly, you know, it might like I've had people say like, oh, you know, I, I really like my therapist because she's older and she reminds me of my mom. OK, like that might be priority to you. Again, there's no right or wrong. So just things to think about. Now, I would also recommend doing your research. So this is kind of where it might seem tedious kind of in that process. But believe me, it's like worth your time. So what I mean by doing your research is, you know, try to investigate if, you know, there's a faith based practice around you, you know, investigate if they offer that investigate if they're open about faith, you know, on their profile, investigate if this person has an expertise in like what you're bringing into the room, you know, like, okay, so I was just diagnosed ADHD. So I want to find somebody that's specifically trained in that. That makes sense. You know, I want to find somebody that does EMDR because I've experienced this recent trauma. That makes sense. You know, so you're, you're allowed to investigate into specialties and expertise of the therapist as well. And then also, I mean, like I said earlier, if they're recommended, I feel like that gives you a whole leg up, you know, of kind of just going in, kind of trusting them that much more, which is great. I think you also need to monitor expectations, though. You know, if like, so let's say you encounter three strangers on the street, you know, it's likely that you're going to jive or align with one of them probably more than the others. That's like human nature. Like we're not called to be BFFs with everybody. We're not called to have the same opinions as everybody, you know, and the same goes for finding a therapist. You know, if you have to kind of try a couple of therapists to find the right fit, again, trust me, it's worth your time doing that. It's worth kind of scheduling a couple consultations because in research, they talk about the therapeutic relationship, which is, you know, the relationship between therapist and client and how that is like very, very important in determining the success of therapy. So if you're not jiving with the therapist, you need to find somebody else and that's okay. So again, do your research, kind of monitor those expectations of, I don't have to like the first person that I meet with, you know? Um, and also, you know, finally just be your own advocate. So if you are a first time therapy client, then make sure that that's clear. You know, ask lots of questions, you know, get an idea of, okay, what can I expect here? You know, how do you, how do you work versus, you know, maybe another therapist, you know, can you tell me a little bit about how this is going to look? Say that, you know, I'm coming in with, you know, A, B, and C. And like, is that something that you have experience with? You're entitled to ask those questions. You know, if you're a seasoned therapy veteran, then great, you know, and be sure to also advocate for yourself in that situation, you know, be able to say, you know, okay, I had to pass, you know, therapists that didn't really work out for this reason and this reason. So just so you're aware, like that didn't really jive with me or gosh, I had this like pass it, you know, therapist, but she retired, but she was great because she did this, this, and this. Tell the new person that, you know, is that something that, you know, we can do or that you're open to, or, you know, are you trained in that? Whatever, you know, you are allowed to advocate for yourself in that. I think people just you know, it's kind of the authority fallacy, you know, like, oh, this is a professional. Oh, they know better than I do. Oh, they're going to tell me exactly how this goes. Therapy is more collaborative than that, you know, and it involves you in a very purposeful and important way. So be sure that you feel comfortable advocating for yourself if you need to, you know, with like what you're bringing in or again, like asking questions. So ultimately, I'm just really proud of you if you are looking for a therapist because that first step is honestly the hardest. You know, I almost guarantee that it gets easier once you just start into like the therapy sessions because the comfort is there, the trust starts getting built, and hopefully you have some questions answered. And it just it goes a lot more smoothly than like that initial call, which can take a lot of courage and be kind of scary. So good for you for thinking about this. And hopefully these like just kind of few little things to even reflect on before making that call help. Um, let me know if it does. Let me know if it doesn't. <laughs> that would be helpful too. Uh, so leave me comments. Please subscribe. 
Um, and as always, you know, follow me on my other platforms and, you know, leave me messages there and just thanks for following along. So many blessings and good luck in your search.